Okay. There's Aris Daryono. Uh, our composers are with us, Iwan Gunawan and uh, Yudana. Good morning, Aris. You're muted. Oh, sorry, I'm, I was muted. Um, um, good afternoon, everyone. It's um, it's one o'clock here in the in in London. All right. Well, I think I have the time right now, <laughs> so I'm very excited uh, to have all of you here. Uh, we have three Indonesian composers. Um, one in Indonesia, one in New Zealand, and one in London, because as we can see, Indonesian music is its own kind of world music since it happens all over the world. Uh, we're going to um, play you performances, videos of performances of pieces by each of the three composers with very short introductions, just to get right to the music. And then when we've listened to five, we have five pieces, a little under an hour of music. And after we've enjoyed the concert, we'll be able to talk with the composers and you can ask them questions. And um, we can all go out for Kopi Susu together. That's what I wish we could do. Let's go to the concert and then go out and find a nice warung and have Kopi Susu and Pisang Goreng. Maybe next year, Aris, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is it, are you ready to start? Yep. Yes, okay. So uh, the first composer whose music we will listen to is Aris Daryono. So Aris is an Indonesian composer um, living in London. He's been in London for quite a while. And in addition to composing some very interesting music, Aris started an organization called the Gamelan Composers Forum because he thought it would be a good idea for Gamelan composers to get together, share their works, and talk about different challenges of being someone involved in Gamelan who's also a composer. So each year um, there'd be different kinds of musicians available for composers to work with. And on Aris, when was the first one, the first Gamelan Composers Forum meeting? We started the um, um, the concerts, the events in 2013 at SOAS, um, School of Oriental and African Studies in London. And um, since we um, started in 2013, we've been involving many composers from around the world and musicians based in the UK. Yeah, one of the things you've done that I th think has been so interesting as I've followed um, this, these events every year is you have a defined kind of ensemble which changes every year and then you invite composers to work with those musicians so it's not just like it's not the same it's always different I know one time you had um, Gender Wayang and a DJ is that right yes so and... every yes every year we have different theme and we have we also invite artists from different backgrounds to um, collaborate with the composers. So um, we have um, D we, we had a DJ few um, couple of years ago. We had a um, jazz guitarist. We had a um, contemporary um, puppeteer as well. So we had um, we we have different artists to collaborate with. Every right. Year. And um, was your last one the one that I came to? The last one, yes, uh, was it 2018? 2018. So yeah. uh, I, Aris invited me and he said, you can come, but here's the siara, here's the requirement. You need to compose something for a flute, cello, and yeah. you can have two gamelan players play any instruments that you want. You get four musicians. And I think you're, I love the name of your group. You called it Intimate Gamelan. And it was for really, really great musicians. And you'll be seeing them in one of the pieces coming up. Well, how about we start 
playing some music since that's why we're all here. Sound good? Okay, um, the first piece we're going to hear is by Ari Staryono, and it's called Beautiful Mind. And it's not it's not even for four musicians, it's just for two musicians. But um, Aris, do you want to tell us a little bit about Beautiful Mind? Yes, um, just some um, correction. Um, the piece is called Symbol Mind. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes. But it's very beautiful. That's why I was oh, confused. Okay. <laughs> it is called Simple Mind. Yeah, yeah the, um, the idea of the piece is um, um, to create a short piece, um, around five minutes, and to put um, a lot of different ideas um, into one short music. So you might hear later that um, every um, there are so many passages, so many ideas that I I throw into this this piece, and but the whole piece is um, influenced um, by um, the technique called imba or okorean in, in Japanese gamelan music. And I thought saron instruments in, in Japanese gamelan saron is very um limited instruments and that it only has just um, six keys or so uh, but then in, in this piece I um, I use slender and pillow tuning um, to combine together so both instruments are saron but you have a slender saron with five notes and a pelog saron with seven other notes yeah and they and they just do imbal interlocking parts together yeah, so yes. yeah well it's Okay, well, let's see. Um, let's see what you can do with two saran and two musicians, but two really good musicians. I love this piece. Just one second, I have to get the right piece queued up. Okay, now we are ready.
So that was uh, Simple Mind by Aris Dariono, who's the um, founder of the Gamelan Composers Forum and the reason we're all together today to talk about music by Indonesian composers from all over the world. That was played by Aris Dariono and Robert Campion. And Aris, the ending was beautiful. I, I really liked that. It was so delicate after all that strong playing to have just those last two notes. Really lovely. Maybe that's why I think it's called Beautiful Mind instead of Simple Mind. Well, the next piece we're going to hear is also by Aris, and it's for his uh, group Intimate Gamelan, the group that I was so fortunate to have a chance to compose for in 2018. Uh, flute, cello, and two gamelan players. And uh, Aris, why don't you unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about the piece we're going to hear next. Yes, uh, the piece is called <clears throat> Papat, which means four. Um, the piece is um, it's like a um, quartet for two players on kenders and two diatonic instruments. The idea of this piece is actually, um, um, I would say, um, adapting um, Japanese gamelan music um, and concept, which is about um, interpretation. So, <clears throat> in this piece, I, I give the um, composers some um, composers. I give the um, musicians, players, some kind of guidance that they um, they have so many so much space to um, to create their own dynamic um, rhythm. And when they create um, those musical elements, they have to collaborate with, with other musicians. And I thought this is the same way as, as playing Japanese gamelan music, that every, every player gets just the uh, palung and the, the, the notations, but then the players will have to interpret the palung and they will have to put the tenko and they will have to do the karap and and at the same time, they have to interact with others. How what the karab what um, chenko that fits into particular palungan, for example, that can also fit in with other others playing as well. That's the idea of this um, this piece. So um 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 this piece um I I would believe that um every time we we play this piece, we would get different results. Sure. Because of this um because of this um interpretation concept yeah that's uh, that's one of the things i love so much about javanese music is the combination of fixed elements and flexible elements so the piece has a structure and a definition but it's actually brought to life each time you play it by the musicians who are playing it that's a, a really beautiful idea about how to create music mm -hmm. um the title is pop hot can you talk a little bit about what you meant by that it's um, just some simple idea. Papat um, is a Japanese word for four because the piece is, um, is, uh, is for a um, quartet. Um, um, and I, I was um, kind of, when, when I wrote this piece, I, I, I was thinking of the um, um, Japanese philosophy, Sutilur Papat Limo Pancher, which means every, every one of us. Um, um, has brother or sister, four brothers or sisters living in the north, the south, the east, and the west. Mm. And the fifth one is us in in the middle. That those mm. brothers or sisters, um, they always guide us in 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 our our life. That sounds like a really mm. good thing to for us to think about today. All being combined, connected in the middle, and because mm. here we are. So um, we're now going to hear uh, Papat by Aris Dariono. Thank you. 
Okay, we're back. That cello is fantastic. What an amazing sound. And the, and the flute, kind of like the other end of the possibilities of instrumental timbre and tonality. It's great. How did you decide on having flute and cello as the two musicians to combine with gamelan? Well, actually, uh, um, this space is open for any diatonic instruments that can play long and staccato um, techniques, really. So it could be a flute, cello, any <coughs> or brass or, or um, string instruments. The only the only consideration is that, that when, when you combine two conders with these instruments, you have to be careful in, in, in terms of the game. Um, balance sound because um, usually these instruments plus wind and, and string instruments are louder than than especially than kinder, Japanese kinder instruments. Yeah well I think you did a great job of getting those four players to interact and become kind of one ensemble. It's really great. Well now we're going to go on a journey with Wayan Yudana, who was kind enough to be up quite late as we combined time zones from all around the world in order to be together. Um, um, Mas Yudana, would you like to tell us about your piece that and the title is Journey? And why is it called that? Mm. I'm on that. Uh, no, can you turn, can you need to turn your camera on. Uh, that's uh, but uh, okay. they say that you uh, you the host is disabled. You still disable me. Disable okay, me. I can I can yeah. hear you, but I can't see you. Yeah, I can't see. Okay. Okay, uh, it is okay. so important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess for I guess for music, the sound is most important anyway. So even for introducing music. I guess the sound uh, yeah. is most uh, important. Is, yeah. <laughs> so go ahead. What do you want to know the, the, I, about the, the, yeah. the well the the judulnya the title is journey and I'm wondering what that means. Yeah, journey. It's as written in 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 the, the beginning of that piece. It's a poem, uh, that talk about oh. the journey of life. 
Ah, uh, 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 you, you will you will see you will uh, read it. Uh, I think better in a better uh, perception in a better imagination. I don't want to uh, push you in in uh, my perception. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't don't yeah. don't don't give it away. You're right. The poem appears it, at, yeah. the, at the beginning. Uh, that's what I want to say. This piece is uh, uh, using gamelan smarandana. Uh, this uh, poem is Gamelan Smarandana is uh, very unique. It's a combination of two Gamelan in one Gamelan. Right. This is a full set of Smarandana. This big uh, ensemble, like a two in one, yeah, like a shampoo and conditioner combination. <laughs> <laughs> two in one. <laughs> that 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 is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in in practice, because it's a. Uh, uh one instrument uh because this instrument there's only one octave except the rion uh, the melodic configuration is played by two instruments with different register yeah because every instrument is a uh, um the uh, uh divided by two the lower register is a kabiar and the higher the register is smartagulingan, my thing for me. That's a, uh, you know, that character of that ensemble, kebiar and smartagulingan, very different. Kebiar is right, actually right, more sure. sharp, and uh, smartagulingan is a bit mellow. And then every um, the character of that is uh, it actually is different uh, in a, uh, in the tuning interval. Very different be, between kebiar and smart gulingan. That mm -hmm. is uh, for me is uh, a lot of things I can elaborate from here, and then uh, especially with uh, what I found it a lot of uh, wave on back in different tuning of interval in between two gamelan actually become one like a sample and conditioner I told you before. Mm -hmm. uh, that piece actually start from there. Uh, that's so confusing but funny. Uh, uh, for me, it's all good. And uh, for me, it's, uh, I'm always say to myself and then uh, so uh, in my in my musician or or other people, I always say that is not the here job to understand everything. Yeah, I often right. say don't burden your, your ear to understand music. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. When you say, um, it reminds me of the Javanese expression salat gumun, which means wrong but nice. So mm. things that we aren't used to that seem new and different at first turn out to be really nice, and then they become part of our musical vocabulary. The um, the Samaradana gamelan, the idea of combining a five tone gamelan and a seven tone gamelan on one instrument, um, that was Wayan Brata's idea, right? The composer yes. and gamelan yes. builder. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's, I think Samaradana has become kind of the Balinese gamelan of choice now uh, around the world when people want to have a mm -hmm. Balinese gamelan instead of kebyar. Yeah, that's yeah. one of a uh, modern They're gamelan, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Like called, yeah, in there. I mean, even... So you have these two different kinds of pelag, but I remember Michael Tenzer told me once that on the Samaradana you could pick four notes and get Kasan Slendro, even if you if you pick the right the right four notes. So who are the musicians who are playing on this recording? Who's it's uh, the music played by a, a group in Denpasar called Verdiswaram. That. Uh, yeah, the young people who interest with uh, new music because not much people can, uh, you know, that accept it with that, that understand what they're going uh, going to do with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that uh, that most young people start to really really like it. Yeah, is there's a group you work with a lot? Uh, I, yeah, I, I work with uh, what is for with other group too, but most of this. But uh, if I work with uh, gamelan smarandana, I work with what is for because in fact I have nothing. I have no gamelan myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm only myself. Yeah, it's no, so, no. 
I, I, I have one. I have one more question. Um, if because the the two videos that we've seen so far show the gamelan musicians and the instruments playing, but the video we're about to see does not show the instruments. Do you want to tell us anything about that, or should we just let it be a surprise? Uh, actually, I have no uh, video of play this uh, uh, music yet. Yeah. yeah, I have a recording, but not so good too. But uh, okay. the low re register, you can hear very clear, except you using the headset. Yeah, uh, yeah, because Aris asked me to uh, uh, to show that uh, music. I just put uh, something there. Uh, might be connected, might be not. But don't, don't worry. Just uh, uh, use you uh, on imagination or perception. Yeah. Okay. Perspective. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's uh, it. Yeah. I, I think the video combined with all the different things you do in this music really do make this feel like a journey. It's very exciting. I'm really uh, glad that you're sharing it with us. Um, it's about 20 minutes long, but. You'll, yeah, it it takes long. you to so many different places. I, I think you'll really enjoy it. So let's switch over to that and we'll watch and listen to Journey by Wayan Gede Yudana.
That was amazing. That oh, yes. Yeah. That was amazing. Mm. Uh, let me see if I can turn your camera on. Yeah. If you need to. That's okay. We don't need to. We're just, we'll yeah. just stay. We'll just stay in the sound world. I I was trying to think of. Um, hey, what do you um, think? What do you think about that kind <clears throat> of music? You think it? Uh, uh, the musician is not amazing. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely well, amazing. Absolutely. So, absolutely. So it's like, I was thinking, let's see. Hey, but Luar Biasa, Kagum. And then I thought, there must be a Balinese expression when you hear Not music really. that is just totally blows your mind. No, nothing. <laughs> that was really, really great. You know what it, it made me think of, and I had to look it up. There's a painting by uh, Marcel Duchamp called uh, new descending a staircase i don't know if, and it's like a whole bunch of bodies uh, kind of you know walking walking down a staircase but because they're so close together it just becomes this one kind of grand gesture and i feel like that's what you did you you uncovered the gamelan you showed us here's the kendang and here's this and then you layered them all back together so that we could hear all the sounds kind of becoming one kind of giant full gesture. It was just amazing. Really great. Oh, thank you. And the other thing it made me think of, especially in the first part, when you're exploring, you know, the combinations of notes is <clears throat> that it's kind of standard to describe Balinese gamelan as having paired tuning. So when the two instruments play together, you, you hear beats, but you just took the idea of hearing beats to a whole new world and just explored that in so many ways. I just, that was just really something. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. And was the video made in Bali? Was it like on kite day or something? Oh uh, yeah, that's a kite, yeah. the giant kite. It's called yeah. Jangan. That uh, dragon, like a yeah, a dragon uh, kite thing like that. Yeah, I know. Very big I, kite. It's really yeah. big. Just mm. uh, it was just like we were just riding on the folds of the kite and the sound. Mm. Did you you probably I'm guessing you teach that 
to all the musicians a little bit at a time. I wrote, I mean, you don't have scores, I would think. How, how did the yeah. musicians learn that piece? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> how that worked with the musician. Uh, that starts with learning uh, the music from a uh, written score, actually. Oh, really? You know, uh, as a traditional musician before uh, uh, in Bali, they, they're not used to read the music. Yeah, they play by memorize. But this sure. music is not composed for memorizing. Oh, it's too hard to memorize. Yeah. Wow. So uh, what kind of what kind of notation is the, your score in? I write uh, in Western notation. Yeah. I have background uh, Western music too. Right. Yeah, and then I, I teach them how to read the music, and then um, and then step by step, and they know how to read. That the uh, uh, first thing they know how to read. And but the problem is actually uh, the musician don't understand the music yet. Ah. Yeah, don't understand what uh, in I write that for the music. What I I mean, what uh, uh, actually the message of what uh, uh, yeah uh, kind of uh, thing I want to uh, m my perception. I mean. Yeah. So the uh, maybe it, the the notation by itself doesn't explain uh, everything that you need them to understand yeah, because two strengths for them two strengths the the elaboration of uh, uh, the music uh, like a, a rhythmic elaboration melodic structure is totally different <clears throat> yeah because uh, uh, most of my musician is come from uh, traditional gamelan but very high standard of technique yeah. very good uh, at play uh, but uh, uh, and then uh, they begin using their own interpretation and uh, oh. uh, and own imagination to understand my music. I let them. I let. I just. I let them. Uh, them into uh, have uh, their own imagination at first. It mm -hmm. was easier for them to uh, if they could use their own perception and uh, use that how to transpose their own knowledge from traditional music to my music. Mm -hmm. For me, it's not uh, a big problem. The musician imagine and interpret my music in already different way from what yeah. I've, written, I've written, actually. Uh, oh, really? It, wow. Yeah, uh, that's the first. Yeah. It made, uh, because uh, it made quicker for the musician to learn the piece. Mm -hmm. Then I put my, uh, that, oh, this, I mean this, I mean that. It took too long. Yeah, they, they, I think they don't need that yet. Yeah, uh, uh, in that time. But for me, it's a that's a step to learn uh, a new score for uh, to score for them. Yeah, with so their I, own imagination. Yeah, but I, so I think that the score is not enough. It needs you and the score. I mean, you could have people who could read Western notation, but if they couldn't play Balinese gamelan at that level. They would that, not be able that to need, realize your piece. That need able to read very complex, totally. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it, uh, the score is not 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 standard, easy to read. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, readable. But this complex rhythm, and <clears> then <throat> I need to also work with a high standard of Balinese musician. How sure? how how to play their music as a standard like a. Uh, all technique thing in a traditional way. But I believe uh, uh, that it's important not to push them hmm. to, uh, you know, uh, I need step, I need step to not uh, to push them, the, the ear and press your ear to understand anything. I, uh, you don't need to know anything. Yeah, uh, just uh, how to play and then step by step and yeah. They, they they understand what what they're doing now how, they can how, memorize actually. how long did it take you to get this group of people to be able to play that piece how long did you uh, work with them that piece is so fast because i uh, i make another piece a couple pieces before uh, uh with them um, and then a couple months learn how to read music and then i give uh, more a uh, uh, piece and one uh, until until this this uh, I think uh, a couple piece already and yeah. this uh, 
no, no more than one man for this. Right, but they had already learned to understand your ideas. Yeah, and, they and the kinds of things you wanted them to try. I think so. Yeah, it, it it makes me think it's like the most complex level of the tradition of Western notation, but it has to be combined with the most complex level of the tradition of Balinese gamelan technique. And those two together just take off. It's just a wonderful piece. M yeah, maybe because I, I used to hear uh, so see I uh, saw some uh, some composition very complex in in the idea in notation, but uh, don't need a really uh, technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't need a, 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 a you know a skill. I, I need skill. I need a high skill for for my 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 work. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe you'd let us uh, publish that score in Bolungan sometime. I'd love to see it. Oh, it must yeah. be amazing. an amazing That's score. A, Share a that with can, us sometime. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was really definitely quite a journey. That was terrific. Um, let's see. Andy wants to know the name of the group again. Can you tell us the name of the group yeah. that you worked with? Urdi Swaram. From Pilit of Padang Sambian is the West Denpasar. Oh, when yeah. Western Denpasar. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, I'm, have, you, have they recorded other pieces of yours? Yes, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so where, if we wanted to hear some more of that, how, how could we hear it? Is it available the, somewhere? YouTube. On YouTube. Yes. The world is the world. The whole world is on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you have yes, a channel please. on YouTube under your name? No, no, no. It's under their name. Yeah, just write my name, Yudana. That's coming that's all, all my okay. work. There. Some of well, them, some yeah, not. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, I, um, I bet people in our audience are already typing your name into YouTube. Uh, and also yes. that uh, music for not only for gamelan. I use. Uh, I'm great. Uh, I'm used. Uh, I'm write music for. At the instrument too, like Western instrument. It, yeah. Yes, we have um, a listener from Mugambi from Kenya who wants to make a comment. Please go right ahead. You can write it down or you can turn your camera on and ask yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, hi. This is, uh, is Njane Mugambi from Kenya. Um, yeah, hi. Uh, I'm yeah. Aris, uh, a friend of Aris, uh, invited me. I'm, I'm a composer myself. Uh, and um, I just want to make a comment on, on from uh, first of all, uh, this is this is a fantastic forum. We, we don't have as many here. I mean, we have a we have a huge um, music culture uh, here in East Africa. But I, I'd like to make a comment on what Wayan just said about teaching the musicians the music that is just written uh, that he composed and working through the, the process of writing new stuff to people who are already very, very highly skilled. I mean, the, the, the level of playing uh, there is uh, outstanding, beyond outstanding. And then you said, uh, you wrote the music and then at the same time, you're teaching them how to read uh, the Western uh, score and yeah. then they were reinterpreting your music. And the music that you're writing, you're writing was now becoming uh, three-pronged. The stuff you wrote in your head, the process of uh, trying to notate what is in your head, the process of the high level musicians, uh, a high level musician in Vienna feel is the same as a high musician uh, in Indonesia, in, in here in Nairobi, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to, inter to, they were putting that notation into their heads to re and reinterpreting it. And at the same time, the third process was they were then just uh, putting what you had put on paper and what they understood of what was put on paper and what they understood you are telling them, creating new music. And I wrote a little comment here. The, this whole process really needs to be documented. It's yeah. not the music that we really, 
uh, wants. Yeah. The next time you're doing this, uh, it is worth uh, billions and billions of dollars to have a little camera in the process for the three months, because that's what uh, Bebop, this is Bebop. This is exactly yeah. what happened with Jazz Bebop. Yeah, so that's mm. my comment. That's fantastic. Yudana, do you make videos of the rehearsals when you're teaching, working on the piece? Uh, some are on video, some not, yeah. Because yeah, I'm not yeah. focusing on that. I'm focusing on uh, create your music, yeah. Why also I let them uh, uh, have uh, their own interpretation first. Because uh, whatever easier for, for me to uh, to uh, to create that, uh, to work with them, and then I use that way. Can I ask you what, when you say their own interpretation and and um, Mr. Mugambe just made a great uh, yeah talking yeah. about three prongs. So you have ideas in your head and you put them on paper, and then those that notation represents things that should happen on the Balinese instruments. But what do you mean when you say then they can have their own interpretation? What what can be what has to stay the same? And what can be changed? For example, that one line, one passage, with the all thing they never hear, not familiar, uh, uh, like a melodic, for example, they, they they can't understand it. What that? What 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 really that? Uh, how that sound is? And I I ask them, can you sing that? He can. He asked me back, ah. can you? Yeah. Can you sing it? No, I can't too. Just read it and play on that. They can. They can play. They yeah. can play if, with. If yeah. I tell them how to, uh, uh, that sound like that's uh, that more difficult for them, and that they put the the interpretation there, uh, uh, that what what they can imagine about the sound uh, by it, their own uh, uh, sound first. <laughs> that that is faster. Hmm. So you're letting them interpret the notation maybe in slightly different ways from what you originally were trying to notate? Uh, no, no, the, the, uh, uh, what I write is they play like that. They, play, they understand okay. the different way. I see, God, yeah. that's just, uh, just really that, amazing. That's very, very strict, uh, very precise uh, note, very precise and articulation and dynamic, that all precise. But uh, they play like that. But if you ask, uh, if you you ask them and you ask me, they will be say different. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. D different paths, but then it's jadi satu. <laughs> Lama kalama an men jadi satu. Even though it becomes yeah. one thing, even though the information came in so many different forms. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that with yeah, us. Welcome. And, um, I look forward to learning more about your composing and performing process. That would be, that'll be really fun to learn about. Thank, Thank you, you for staying awake. You sound very awake now, even though it's what, like two uh, yeah. in the morning I'm for you. A bit drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, All right. Uh, well, we're going to go on. Thank you so much, Blee. Thank you. Okay. Wow. That was really something. Um, okay. And now we have another uh, composer, um, Iwan Gunawan, who also can talk to us about combining training in Western music with deep training in, uh, in, in Javanese, Sundit West Javanese music. And uh, Iwan, are you here with us? You've just done some amazing work um, yeah. that combines everything that you know in really interesting ways. So. Um, Iwan Gunawan is based in Bandung and teaches at, um, now it was Ikip, but now the name has changed. You'll have to remind me what it's changed to, the university that you teach at. Hello? And yeah. um, yes, what, the, what, what's the name of the university you're teaching at now? Uh, in Indonesia is called uh, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to get that right. Yeah. But Iwan has. Um, you have training in. You know, it's kind of like not really Western music versus you know Indonesian music. It's like everything that you know. 
And that's kind of how I think of it. A composer can learn and take in so many things in a lifetime of experience in music. And then when you go to compose, your resources are everything that's inside of you. So it's not like you write Western music. It's just you, you know how to communicate in different ways. You know how to uh, realize your ideas on different instruments. And you've done that not only in Indonesia, but in countries all over the world. You've worked with groups all throughout Europe and Holland. And uh, everyone's always, I know, so excited when you are coming to work with them. I remember um, I saw your group for the first time in 2018 at the big Munich Gamelan Festival. And people were saying, and Iwan's going to come to London. And that's we're going to do such great things. I think everyone who gets to work with you uh, is so excited because you have so many different perspectives on how to create music. And we're, we're going to see some examples of that now. You want to tell us what we're going to listen to first? No, I don't. You don't want you just. We should just listen. Yeah, right? Maybe learn because the, the the next piece also the the the, the pieces is uh, there are some connecting with them. Uh, maybe oh I the next two pieces maybe. you mean yes. the next two pieces you see yeah. as connected yeah because do you do you want to play them without talking in between you want to explain both of them right now yeah up, up to you up to you I will answer if you have some question <laughs> okay well let's 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 do one at a time so what's the first piece we're going to hear uh, the piece called La Lamba mm -hmm. uh, Actually, this piece is uh, commissioned by Tropon Theater. It was they also asked me to uh, make rearrangement of the Six Marimbas by Steve Fry, and then uh, mm -hmm. they asked, uh, "Can you uh, make some pieces like a comment or some response about <coughs> Steve Fry about the Six Marimbas?" And then I create La Lamba. So La Lamba is some term from the Karawitan Sunda is like uh, um, what's called if, I, I don't know in English maybe you, you understand about the mbat mbat in yeah. Japanese I think you use yeah this well term. it's mbat is it's it's kind of tuning but it's there's variations in it so like each set of gamelan instruments has its own mbat even though two gamelan might both be slendro or both be pelog they're still going to have different characters so yeah, is that have, how you but, think of it? Yeah, in, in Karawitan Sunda, but is uh, uh, related to the time about the time. Oh, like the, okay. The fast and the uh, like uh, the slowest. Like we have some uh, level but in in uh, Sundanese uh, gamelan, especially mm -hmm. the Klingon style, calls Gurudugan is pastor, and become uh, sawilat dua wilat. But we oh, love and then right. la lamba. So every mbat they have some cycles. But uh, yeah, you know in la lamba the cycles is very long. So we 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 cannot uh, uh, feel again the, the 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 cycles because the the, the cycles is too long. Too long. La I lamba, see. Yeah, because the, the the minimalism music is work with the repetition what the uh, uh, work with uh, cycles so la lamba is like the the different cycles between instrument and they play together uh, so that is for, for la lamba i think that it's that's more like what we might talk call irama in central javanese music yeah so when you talk sa will it and do well it it's it's an expansion of time Yes. So, right. So you'll have a, a structure, a melodic structure. And then, you know, it's like gamelan music isn't really fast and slow. It's like expanded and contracted. So it sounds like you're working with expanding even beyond sa will it and dua will it. How far can that go? Is la lambat the largest expansion of a musical form that you have? Yes. 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 And yeah, that's great. That's one of the great things about gamelan is. Um, the, the different experiences of time that one can have learning to play that music. That's one of the things I love about it. So shall we listen to that piece now? Why don't you tell us though, um, I know you conduct a lot of your, 
performances and who are the players? Because you have some amazing musicians playing your music. Who's yeah. playing on this recording? My ensemble is Kiai Patahila. Kiai Patahila. You've been working with them for a long time then. Yes. How right. long? Yeah. When did you start that group? Uh, in it, it 2005, uh, yeah. Ah, oh, wow. And have some of the musicians been in the group the whole time? Yeah, not all, but it's, yeah, whole time with my current in Gamlan music, they're all <laughs> involved. Right. Well, that's really exciting. Um, okay. Well, shall we listen to it? Let's go on a, a journey through ex an expansion of time in uh, La Lamba by Iwan Gunawan.
My goodness, there's so much to talk about there. That's really incredible. But um, so this wasn't just an expansion of cycles in time. You have overlapping cycles of different lengths. I mean, I'm pretty sure I saw one Gender player playing two against three with two hands, and there must have been a lot more uh, complex crossing over of cycles in that. What, what were you working on? Yeah, yes, right. <clears throat> yes, right. There is like, if, if, if we uh, imagine the, the, the cycle, like, yeah, the cycle with, with different sides, and they uh, uh, running in the same time, and the, 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 the impact is also the, the counterpoint, the counter, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the polyrhythm. We have polyrhythms, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you have a lot of, yeah, how many different time cycles do you have going, going on at the same time? I, I, I mean, what are some of them? What are some of the, the lengths? You have like 13 or not? I mean, can you say what that is or is that the wrong question? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I have to look the score. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It, it's 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 very hard to, to see, but but like like uh, like they repeated some they repeated the the the, the, the melody, but the, the length is always different. Ah, so, I see. Something like that. Yeah. So it's great because you have all this melodic interaction and different kinds of melodies. Plus, you have. You know the voice kind of bringing that own that its character melodic gesture, but then you have all these rhythmic complexities yeah. going on yeah, at the same the, time. The hard part is like the, the perception because every every player they have uh, own perception. So sometimes why uh, I all uh, why this piece need to be conducted because if not conducted there will be messy <laughs> because <laughs> the, the perception. So we, we have to to. Uh, we have to some one strong rule just to guide where where's the the, 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 the the beat so and they just follow the beat but the feel of the matter of, of course will be different right but for me uh, this is uh, very uh, good uh, work uh, are the very work well we with, with the like in the tropen theater because there is some, yeah, it was a big some, space. Some, uh, yeah, big, big space because it's too slow, and then we can hear uh, any, anything. We can hear some some. Sometimes I I can hear uh, the tune is like not produced by 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 player, but we can hear that something like that. It's like in the combination of all the sounds. Yeah, kind, kind of becomes like a meta gamelan. Yes, kind of. Uh, in the in the only when you hear everything combined, yes. you actually hear the character of the piece. Yes, right. And of, of course, in a in a in some gamelan, you have the kendang, the drums, as the leader of time, a kind of conductor that you hear. But you're also providing the same thing, you know, by conducting a, a representation of time that everyone can have in common. It just happens to be looking at it instead of listening to it, but it sounds like um, that's important to you. Mm. Yeah, but uh, for, for this piece, I, I don't need the kendang. No, no, the, absolutely yeah. not. No, I, I'm, I'm just saying you need, you need a commonality of time. Everyone has yeah. to have a sense of time that's the same in order for all those overlapping things to work. Yeah. Did... Um, I just have to give a little shout out to the the lighting designer and the and the choice of costumes because that that warm orange light kind of lit a fire underneath <laughs> the piece and I, the, you know the little th you don't always when you're composing music you don't always think about the visual presentation of it but somebody gave a lot of thought to that setup. <laughs> I don't think that. You didn't think of it. Yeah. Was that your? Yeah. Was that someone at the theater, or was that someone you were working with? No, I think it is just consequences. Yeah. So I, I don't think the, the the design, the background, and the lighting. I, I just choose the, the the costume. We just choose costume, and I don't know. 
and and the drop-in theater just make it well so it's okay anyway you know everyone gets to contribute something when you do a performance sometimes lighting designers really want to contribute a lot and i think yeah. clearly that that one did um we had talked a lot about notation with yudana and in this performance some people are looking at notation some people are not looking at notation I saw one person reading notation that was attached to the back of the player in front of him, which I thought was a really nice way to not have to have a music stand. So what's the role of the notation in uh, you thinking about the piece and teaching it and then how you shape the performance? Yeah, yeah, I, I think this is normal collision. Notation for, for, for us is just guide. We, we, we use notation if we need it. If not, it's just forget the notation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we have uh, some experience, different, different situation. So for me, this notation is not big problem. If we, sometimes I, I just make challenge to, to player to do not use notation if you can play it, but if needed notation and just use notation. And for, for this case, for this Lalamba, sometimes they need it uh, because the melody is sometimes is different, uh, it's like same, but different. So for that uh, effect, uh, yeah, we need to, to, to memorize that and they, they, they have the, uh, the notation. Okay, all right, great. In, uh, well, let's, let's go on and um... And here the uh, your last piece, which is the, an arrangement of Steve Reich's Six Marimbas, which you were asked to arrange for Gamelan. And then um, after we hear it, we can talk about whether Steve Reich is okay. really what he's taking from Gamelan and what he isn't and, and how you put that piece together. Okay. So this is a Six Marimbas by Steve Reich, but arranged for Gamelan and created for Gamelan by Iwan Gunawan.
Okay, that was really something. Um, I'm, I'd like to give uh, people in our group here, since we're all in this together, 
a chance to ask questions and, or make comments. Um, you can turn your camera on or your microphone on or type something in the chat. Pat Bandam is still here, but that's that's exciting. It's great, great to see all of you. And um, Andy, do you want to talk about what it was like to play Ewan's piece in London? Because that must have been really something. Okay. Um, well, Ewan. Hi, uh, yeah. Jody? Oh, cool. oh, great. Thanks. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear. I can't seem to activate my camera. But um, yeah, it was very exciting working on that piece, La Lumba, because we we learnt it with Pat Iwan, but then performed it without him. So we didn't actually have a conductor when we performed it. Wow. So what was it like to learn it? Uh, fascinating. Fascinating. I, I can't actually remember how long we had with Pat Iwan. Pat Iwan, I don't know if you can remember, it was maybe only a couple of sessions. Hey, Andy, I think you can turn your camera on now. Try. Can I? Yeah, there you go. Am I on? Yeah, we got okay. you. With Pat Iwan, but then performed it without him. So we didn't actually have conducted it. So did everybody memorize it or were you reading scores? No, we, we used a score. I'm getting strange feedback here. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so we 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 learnt it with it. Well, we had a couple of sessions learning with the score, and then I think we did some more work on it, and then performed it. And, and why did you not need a conductor? <clears throat> well, Pat Iwan had gone back to to uh, to Java. So. <laughs> Okay, Peter, you have a question? Well, Iwan, what was it like arranging the Steve Reich piece for Gamelan? Oh, Pat Bandam. Yes, Judy. Let's hear what you think. Well, uh, Judy and all friends, wherever you are now, I would like to congratulate for this wonderful concert tonight. Mm -hmm. All wonderful music. I love to promote this you know, new music to all of the arts institutes in Indonesia. Again, in Yogyakarta, in Bali, in Papua, in Bandung. I think they have to continue creating uh, you know, Indonesian music, the gamelan music. Mm -hmm. So I hope Judy can continue all of those, this kind of, uh, you know, concert, virtual concert, more and more, you know, because now COVID-19 has been, you know, attacking us more than a year already. This is the medium, this is the way that we can listen music from all over the world. So, you know, I have been playing so many Balinese gamelan. You talk about gamelan kebiar today and also when you uh, talk about uh, gamelan semaradano, right? So the combination between gamelan gong kebiar and semar pegulingan. That was really made by Iwayan Brater. But prior to this gamelan, the semaradano, dano, uh, Judy and friends, uh, in 1984, I and Mr. Brata put a concert known as Sandra Tari dance drama, and we were using three gamelan set one. Okay, oh. one is gamelan gong gede, and then second was gamelan gong kebiar, and the third one was gamelan smart pegulingan. And the story of the Sandra Tari in the theater, I mean, the Sandra Tari dance drama on that time was Salia from Dhamma Brata, Death of Sal, Slay of Salia from the Mahabharata. Suddenly, at the end of the uh, performance, it was very hard raining at the art center. 6,000 people watched our uh, 
Chandra Tali performance. And our students and faculty member getting so hard how to move the gamelan from the thrust stage in the, in the art center, right? Here we begin to have a new gamelan. Okay, it was in 1984. And I talked to Pak Brata. He said, possible Pak Brata, one day we combine Semar Pagulingan and Gong Kebiar, right? And a year after that one, Pak Brata created a combination of Gamelan Gong Kebiar and Semar Pagulingan. It was not complete at all. We lacking one uh, tone. It is a smart pegulingan. There was not one, uh, you know, high one, the high register one. Ning, there's no ning on that time. And we played that gamelan for uh, Sandra Tari, made, uh, created by Swasti and, and Winner. And Winner told me, Pak, this our gamelan. On that time, uh, Pak Brato was asking me, what should we call this gamelan? So the gamelan not, it was not called Semaradano yet, but it was called Genta Pinara Pitu. Genta Pinaro Pitu, you know, I mean, the, the musical uh, ensemble with seven uh, tone scale and a uh, gong kebiar. But the Genta Pinaro Pitu was lacking one tone, high register, the ding. Now that gamelan belongs to Dr. Professor Dr. Mental Hood and Madi Hood also. He used that gamelan in Australia, in Melbourne University, but not any longer now because he's now in, in Taipei, in Taiwan, like that. So when we told Pak Brata that the gamelan was lacking one high register tone, ding, like that, Pak Brata was silently adding one more ding, you know, for the gander and the smart pugulingan, not the trompong, of course, yeah, and he called it smaradana. So as Judy said today, Smaradano is more popular now, not only abroad, but also in Bali. It was a good media for people who is learning Balinese gamelan, not only studying about the hitorophony, right? Uh, but Yudano was playing lots of the music today with using Western idea polyphony. Everyone already know that Balinese gamelan, it was mostly hitorophony in style. One melody played by uh, one melody, and then different uh, uh, different group of instruments playing different melody and different kotekan and so on and so on. But today I heard that Yudana was wonderful playing that Samarandano in in a new form of music, lots of polyphony, lots of syncopation. You know something new with Samarandano. That's a new new technique. Yeah, built through this kind of uh, uh, gamelan music. Judy, I heard all of those gamelan, uh, you know, all the composition. I like it. So dynamic, you know. Uh, I'm in Bali now. So anytime you have a virtual concert like this, please do tell me and can, I can spread out all of the, uh, the news and uh, to our people here in Bali. Congratulations, friends. Uh, Siapa namanya tadi itu si Aris? Aris, Aris Daryono. Aris, this, yeah, is really, Aris, this is really yeah, his was, creation to bring people yeah, together this way. It was a really, really great uh, combination of gamelan Java and also Western instrument. You know, I remember me in, in uh, there was a, you know, uh, there was a Jack's Quartet someday in New York. Yeah. Yeah, in the New Jackson York. The Jack's Quartet? Came to Bali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the project by uh -huh. Brian Bombus. Uh, he came here with me in uh, 2012 and we created a new music also through a combination of Balinese gamelan and also different uh, instruments like, what was that today? Uh, cello? No, no. Uh, was flute it and cello. Cello, cello, cello flute and, and cello in, yeah. in Aris's piece. It was really great. A great uh, harmony combination. Yeah. Congratulations, old friend. Love your music tonight. All right. Yuri? Whoa, wait, hold on. Somebody just played some music. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, um, Mr. Mugabe, you have your hand up. What would you like to contribute? Yeah, um, j just, <laughs> just, just to add, uh, this is from Nairobi, Kenya again. 
Um, it's a question to everyone, actually. The, you've talked about, um, uh, Bandem was just talking about the way uh, th there was, a, because of the rain, those people had to adapt in the, in the, uh, back in 1984 and something new started coming up. Now, uh, I've written down a question actually for, for Aris uh, at the beginning, which was with the, as composers um, in, uh, COVID has made us hard to change. You know, we are all working on different projects um, uh, composing right now and the things that have, we've actually had to adapt because of what is happening. Um, just a question out there, when with, given that we have, with the music that we, we create here in Kenya or in, in, in Africa, the creativity and improvising is a key component of, of you know, gr group creativity rather uh, in, in our compositions. With distanced music, or when you are, we're writing as composers, uh, how are you adapting to this? What, has it made you change in the way you're writing as composers, everyone who's here, who's a composer? Um, so that's a question I'm just throwing out there, uh, starting with uh, Aris. Um, that's it. Thank you so much. I love questions. Sometimes I like questions more than answers. So Aris, what do you think? This, I think it's very um, un unfortunate for, for us, um, for composers and players as well, that the um, situation kind of doesn't really allow us to um, get together. And for composer, it's, it's very, um, very um, challenging circumstances, I think. And um, um, honestly, I've, um, since the um, lockdown, since the, the pandemic, I've, I've, I've been working on, on my own and, and composing music on my own, but um, it's um, less interaction with musicians or with, uh, with other composers as well. So, but I'm, I'm hoping that um, when the situation's back to normal, I, I could work together with with other people, with um, players and and other um, artists as well. Yeah, it's, it's been very um challenging situation really. But then, and 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 on the other hand, um, with um the pandemic, I, I think it gives us some time to um kind of to think, to kind of to find more inspirations. We can focus on 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 the aspects and yeah in a way it's great yeah yeah i'm i'm i wonder you know we're, we're creating all these virtual communities and interaction now when we are able to play and in fact i've had people say well we're we're returning to offline rehearsals that not in person but offline it's like this alternative life mm. existing offline but what do you think we'll keep doing that we've had been forced to do because of the pandemic do you think we'll keep doing programs like this that um, allow us to come together across time and distance yes i think um, um there's a good thing good thing about about um about um, um being locked down in, 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 in a way because we, it forced us to kind of to find some way to communicate to um, to each other and 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 during this lockdown I, I, I would say that um, um somehow I'm I'm getting closer to to people that um, people from different side of the world and in a way to kind of to talk and to discuss about music. Um, and maybe to uh, um, plan any, any any future projects, which is great. And I think um, even if, if if this situation goes back to normal, I think we should uh, continue continue should, on doing. Um, we should this keep so yes. Yeah, so, so the pandemic initially limited our world, but maybe lama kalama on it it will expand our world too. Yes, I think so. I'm, I'm, I'm probably looking at this um, 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 
the young the people that joining us today we have we have people from many parts of the world we have from um, david kotlovi from australia and we have jani from kenya and um, yeah people around the world have um, um gathered together in one one um one event that is that is amazing we cannot really do this in any kind of in a kind of real live performance yeah we have um nico is here from south america doing the issue of Bolungan where I tried to get all the gamelan groups to talk about what they were doing. I found out about gamelan groups I didn't even know before, um, you know, in, in, in Chile, in Argentina, in Croatia, there's a, in Moscow. It's, so what, what have other people who have been listening to us, how, how has the, um, the pandemic affected your musical and creative life? Yes, Mr. Mugambi, what do you think? I think you've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, yeah, well, there's, um, I'll talk about the, the, the practically some of the things that I was, I was uh, doing a, a cantata that was to be uh, premiered um, uh, this, this year, actually, this in, in February. Or was it last year? I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, it was, I think it was this year for February. <clears throat> and of course, that was going to involve, I don't know how many singers, 200 and uh, an orchestra. Then COVID came in. So and from a practical point of view, the, the possibility of, of having these big groups uh, is, is not, not in the immediate future. So I started recomposing the same material, but it becomes now jigsaw music in such a way that you can be able to piece it together like a lot of people are, are, are doing uh, so that it can be used, it can be useful for a large group if when, it, when the time allows, or it can be reconfigured, including with tempo meter um, orchestration uh, in a in a jigsaw setting like we have right now, with, with someone being able to uh, create grids on a, so th that's that's the practical side of it yeah. uh, as a composer. But there is another side of it, which is now the question that I was asking, which is the philosophical side. Our understanding of time, of meter, of improvisational space. We are now being forced to react to that. The same way people are being forced to react from removing the gamelan or the music instruments that we have here from ritual to new uh, spheres. Uh, so th that's what right now, when we meet like this as composers, those are the things that, this is what we are sorting out uh, in my opinion. So that's, that's, that's my, my comment. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, um... Irina, where, where are you? I'm not sure where you're located, but you made a really great point, which is since we couldn't interact with people that we're near, oh, oh, hi, okay, you're in, in Romania. That's where my grandmother's from. Um, that we, we couldn't interact with people nearby, so we expanded our interaction with people from uh, multiple continents. That's a really nice way of thinking about it. I like that a lot. Yes, I, um, I, we've, we've kept you a long time. Arius, what do you think? Does anyone have a final question or comment that you'd like to make before we all go on into our day or our night or wherever we are? Well, it's been, it's, it's, this is an amazing gathering, Arius, you're right. We have people from all over the world and um, everyone has a different connection to Gamelan and new connections to each other. And for this, we are very, very grateful and appreciative. And um, I do hope we get to keep doing this.
Yeah, it's a it's a great thing to to do, and and I'd like to kind of encourage um, anyone, musicians, composers, to um, to do the same. Um, um, to um, create events, to interact with others, to collaborate with others. But some um, uh, the biggest challenge, I I suppose, when when you do this kind of event, is actually finding the right time for 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 yeah. everyone. That is a that is the biggest challenge. Um, you might think that. Um, 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 seven o'clock in the evening in Indonesia might be kind of prime time for everyone. You might have people would would attend with some join the events, but um, at the same time, it's um, I think it's a um, fasting month here in, in in Indonesia, and also must be um, challenging for um, for um, maybe Dana and maybe the kind of take away. I have to say, I don't know what time it is now in Korea and New Zealand. So, again, it's, finding the time is very challenging, but um, at the other hand, it's very um, interesting too, kind of to get people together from different worlds and to um, interact, to um, share ideas and, and so on. Yeah. So I've <clears throat> I've put my email on my WhatsApp number. Um, if anyone who's joined us today would like to be a presenter or a commenter or recommend something for another presentation, uh, please get in touch with me or or with Aris, which is at uh, gamelancomposers at gmail .com. and um, maybe we can create the energy to continue to interact in this way. I think that would be fantastic. Uh oh. Well, I hope you're right. Should I do that over again? Okay. Well, shall we say uh, see you at the final gong or meet you at the next the next gong? What do you think, Aris? Are you ready to go on? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. Uh, yes. Um, thank you very, very much for everyone yeah. for joining us. Really. Um, right. So, so if you if you do need to leave, um, thank you so much for being here, and for making the world of Gamelan such a large and encompassing one, for all of us to re keep feeling like we're we're alive, like what we love still exists because we can share it with each other. Thank you yes. so much for being here. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> I'm, I'm leaving this open so it, if, in case people are making comments and want to say things or, you know, before they go. We even seem to have kept Yudana up. Hmm. I'm I'm going to Aris. I'm going to turn off the live stream on YouTube, and then if if we have a little more conversation, we, we can do that. Does that sound okay to you? Yeah. Um. Hey, Peter. Yeah. Um. Oops. Oh. Yeah, uh, will that uh, live stream will that be stay available on the on YouTube? Absolutely. Okay, great. The, well, the live stream will be available, and also we we also recorded it, and mm -hmm. the recordings mm -hmm. of this session and all the other ones that Aris has ah, organized good. before good. this are on the Gamelan Composers Forum YouTube channel. Okay. And, um, and I have to compliment Aris. You've put together some fantastic groups of people, mm -hmm. you know, multi generations, and different kinds of music. So we keep all of those posted, okay. so you can enjoy them. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> hey, David. You turn your mic on. <laughs> You're still muted, David. I know. There he is. Here How I am. You? Yeah, I'm well. Thank you. Um, 
this is yeah a lovely forum so um, i really really appreciate it um and it's good to catch up with you um and as you said earlier it's um yeah it's 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 all it's just as good as being um together in the one place uh yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. I mean, also because you get a bigger, a bigger uh, audience as well. So it's been a fabulous, a fabulous forum. Thank you for uh, yeah, putting it all together, all of you. Great. Thanks for being here because that's, yeah. it's like when you do a concert, the audience is as important as the musicians because otherwise, ah. who are you giving your gift to if there's no one there to receive <laughs> it? So you, you really are, make this successful just by being Yeah, here. yeah. Well, it's lovely. It's lovely to hear yeah, the whole conversation. It's great. Yeah. Inspiring. So mm. take care. I mean, yeah, in all of this silly COVID world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, <laughs> let's play one of your pieces sometime. Yeah. 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 That'd be lovely. Yeah. Yes. Because I'm meant to, yeah, I'm meant to be doing a video for you, Iris, as well at some stage. Yeah. Yeah. And anytime you, when you have time, please. Um, yeah, please. <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's the big thing when I have time. <laughs> yeah, but I caught up with Ade today. She came into town, um, and that was really nice to see her. So, uh, okay, because yeah. her her son is now eighteen months old, and he's yeah, he's a riot. He's good fun. Yeah. Eighteen months already. Wow, wow. Mm. <laughs> eighteen months. Yes, yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So no, okay, it's well, fabulous. We'll keep in touch. Well, we're gonna we're gonna end our live stream. Yeah. But we're we're not going to end our determination to stay connected and keep 